Welcome everyone to the One Sages View podcast. I'm Sarah Christensen, your host, and today is May 19th, 2023, and today we have Gary P. Caton, our guest, and I'll introduce him further in just a moment. Uh, we are going to be discussing Venus in Leo, and Venus in Leo, the retrograde this year. And uh, I'm so excited to share astrology with you, my listeners, and those who watch the video on YouTube. And uh, look forward to, you know, sharing any discussion on this topic, as you wish, in the comment section. So thank you for listening and welcome, Gary. I appreciate the time. I've been following you for, I think, eight or nine years. And um, I just have appreciated your work. I appreciate your art and the other hermetic principles that you've shared online um, so generously with us. So let me give everyone just a little uh, understanding of your background so they have that. Okay, great. It's nice to be here. Thank you. Yeah. Gary P. Caton is a transdisciplinary hermetic practitioner, if I said that correctly, integrating diverse traditions and forms, art forms and practices. He was initiated as an astrologer by a magnificent magnificent dream in 1993 which i can't wait to hear about more 30 years can you yeah that? Wow. and we hope to get a little bit more detail on that today in the podcast <laughs> and uh, he's also since become an accomplished counselor a writer a podcaster teacher photographer and a mage he's the creator of the hermetic astrology podcast and you can find him at his uh website which is www.dreamastrologer.com and i know you have different levels of membership that people can join for your podcast yep. which is great so welcome i'm so excited thank to you, have Sarah. you thank you thank you I, it's great to be here and it's great to see younger people like you jumping in to this game and uh and doing your thing and so and i'm happy to support that It's just amazing to me. I had a really dear friend when I first came to the Asheville area, which has been some time ago now. His name was Kelly Lee Phipps. And Mm. Kelly did a podcast called The Cosmic Weather, which is one of the very first astrology podcasts. And he had a book. It was called Celestial Renaissance. Mm. And Kelly had this vision that there was going to be a renaissance of astrology. And, you know, a lot of people mm-hmm. talked about that back in the day. And I always thought, you know, wow, I mean, OK, great. I, I'll, yay, yay. You know, but I, I, I'll be honest. I never really was a true believer. <laughs> that but it would do that. Yeah, <laughs> I think I think we are living in the thing that he saw. Right. And I think you're a part of it. And that's wonderful. And I'm happy to be here. Well, thank you. Well, I was um, yeah. brought to astrology in 2010 by a vision as well. Um, I've wow. shared it on my earlier podcast. So that's why when you shared your uh, dream, I was like, oh, other people mm. have similar experiences of being initiated yeah. into it. Mine was more of a precognitive, uh, precognitive dream of, of someone from my past and all the synchronicities. And then that mm. preceded their death. So it kind of gave me the warning before Ooh. it happened, two years before wow. it happened. But it was such mm. a spiritual like roller coaster as that was opening up, oh, uh, yeah. and astrology came at the same time. So it was kind of like the vision came, and then with the synchronicities, like, and then within two three months, it was like pointing me to the direction to astrology, and uh-huh. Pluto, you know, wow. through dreams and stuff. So, so yeah, everybody has a ma- well, intense. not everybody, but many have that unique approach where they're awakened to it from a very unique kind of experience and you're yeah there there are different ways that people are called you know some people are called you know all at once and some people it's sort of a gradual call you know mine mine was both i mean uh i was studying architecture at virginia tech Hmm. which is in which is in the new river valley of virginia the new river is one of the oldest rivers in the world it's older even than the appalachian mountains Mm-hmm. which are much older even than the Rockies, right? So, And we know that because the New River crosses the Appalachians, and the only way a river can cross a mountain chain is if it was there first. Right. You know, and, and, and so I wasn't, I, 
I, I needed to engross myself in nature to deal with the stress of academic. I mean, it was really, you know, engineering. I, I'm not a math person. I'm much more of a language arts person. But Virginia mm -hmm. Tech was the only school I could afford because it's a state school. Mm -hmm. And it's an engineering school. And it was, mm -hmm. it was just killing me. And so... I was going out into the caves and the and the um, river and being in nature and out in the national forest and I I had a dream where these crows were talking to me hmm. in English and I thought you know that's kind of strange and so I ended up getting um what what is her name the medicine cards by Jamie Sams to sort of mm -hmm. get what what's going on here why is crow talking to me condense the story a little bit but i ended up deciding you know what this is this is more what i'm actually looking for i'm looking for magic and i thought that design you know i was interested in the design side of architecture you know and i thought that that would be magical enough and if i had um yeah, if I had been in a design school, it probably would have been enough, but I wasn't. And so I left and I, so I hitchhiked around the, the country two or three times. And uh, somebody gave me a regular tarot card deck at a, uh, at a, at a rainbow gathering. Um, and then when I finally came back home, I, it's sort of like the tarot and the nature stuff sort of opened me up. And I had this dream where I'm lying on my back in a field of green grass. And the field is just as far as you can see in all directions, right? And it's just this beautiful field of green grass, kind of a Taurus image, right? And, um, and I'm looking up at the sun and I realize I can, I can look right at it. Like I don't have, it doesn't hurt my eyes. And I'm just like, oh my God. And, and it's just fiery and beautiful. And then I re see that there's the glyph for Venus is in the sun and i was like oh you know that's gotta mean something you know and so i ended up finding an ephemeris and for those of you who don't know nowadays not everybody needs an ephemeris to do astrology but an ephemeris is a table well it's a book it's a book of tables of ephemerides um ephemeral right the the shifting right planet means planet means wandering star so yes that like that so if you open it up for people to see i'm really glad you have one sarah that's awesome kudos on you yeah and that's 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 even better oh i wore out that ephemeris man so because you know i figured out holy crap Venus and the sun were conjunct on the day I had the dream. And I was like, okay, you know, my, the other problem that I had with academia was that, uh, uh, you know, one person says this thing, one person says that thing. Who do you, who do you trust? How do you know? And there's all this, man. Eh, and there's, you know, they want you to jump through so many hoops and everything. And I didn't know, I didn't feel like I could trust that path, but this, this dream, I can trust that that came. I don't know where exactly that came from, but it came from somewhere holy, I think. And so I said, that's it, man. And I, and I, like I said, I wore out, I, what I did is for a couple years, I wrote down, I figured out how to do my chart, first of all. And then I wrote down every day, the transits that were happening. I said, okay. And then I just watched what happened in my life. And I saw, oh, today I had a Mars transit and somebody got kind of angry. Oh, well, you know, there, right. And today I had a Venus transit and somebody was really sweet and, and so on, you know. And, um, I mean, I remember one time I ended up at this, uh, at this, uh, Buddhist monastery and there was the, 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 the guy, the head, um, Bhante, uh, uh, Bhante G was his name, Guna Ratana. Um, he was really, um, always had a smile. Every time you l looked at his face, he smiled at you. That's really, you, do you know how many, how many people do that? I don't know very many people, you know, I mean, guy was really, really just beautiful soul beaming at you every time you 
and and he traveled all over the place and i started realizing this guy's jupiter right like you know he's always happy oh and he and he gave these incredible well like in you know in christian terms we would call them sermons but they're called dhamma talks right in buddhism and then but when he would leave and go on his travels there would be this other guy who was always like frowning he never smiled he, he was always frowning and he was like very terse and he was like Arr. and if you did anything even slightly you know you were always like oh uh, you know and he was like Arr, you know and i was like oh my god he's saturn you know and i so i started to uh, i started to relate to these symbols and archetypes as people as living beings that i was encountering every day you know and that's when i really felt like it became unlocked for me when i was able to do that to see that you know they're not just up in the sky they're right across the table from you um and stuff like that and so yeah anyway that's probably enough about my my journey all right let's Let's continue talking Let's about Venus in uh, Leo. And right. you know what I liked about what you were just saying about when she's evening star and you could call it greatest elongation and greatest then, brightness yeah. or greatest brightness and then goes into uh, goes into the underworld basically and comes back out as morning star. Is that the which one's the greatest elongation? Well, with Venus, it's the greatest brightness on greatest either side. Greatest brightness. Oh, I'm thinking of Mercury. Mercury is elongation. Okay, yeah. that's what I confused the two. <laughs> yeah. Thank with you for correcting Venus, me. No, no worries. Yeah, no. I mean, it, I was looking for something that would be similar with Venus, and it turns out it's not the elongation; it's the brightness. Brightness. Which is about a month before the elongation so it's a little because venus's cycle is stretched out it's much longer it's you know mm -hmm. 1.8 years whereas mercury is only th you know th four months right you handle kind of that shadow pre-shadow stuff not the same as a lot of a lot of contemporary astrologers do that um i mention I it once in a, a while but i don't even i don't pay attention too much because to me I what I tell my clients is if you have something emerging through uh the retrograde cycle it's like something's maybe taking note right as it's going retrograde and then you're going through a process you're integrating something you're shedding something and then you're integrating something and when you're coming out on the other side is really when you have oh okay this is what this was for for me and yes. that, that's what I try to tell them. Um, yes. And it, so it sounds like you're saying the same thing. Mm. But to me, the the colors kind of help to map that. Mm. Because this idea that, oh, I'm on the other side and I'm supposed to be like, aha, this is what it's for. But I'm mm -hmm. still in this shadow where, and there's a lot of avoidant language that people use. Of, don't do this. Don't do that. Don't do the mm. other as long as it's right. in the shadow. And it's right. like. You no, know, once she's on the other side and she's morning star, it's not about avoiding anything. It's about getting back into life and revivifying mm -hmm. your life mm -hmm. with this new Venus energy that you found, you know. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, that's to me, that's why I just stay away from the shadow thing, because it's like it's a little misleading in my in my estimation. So right. I've just... You know, plus, you know, Aquarius rising, I just, and with Aries sun, I just like, I have to do it my own way, man. <laughs> yeah, I'm Aries rising. I get you. I'm oh, Aries rising. Okay. 24 cool. degrees. So, yes. Yeah, that's good to understand kind of how you look at the Venus retrograde cycle and how you language it. I like to kind of understand that, like how someone got there. And that you mm -hmm. bring in the colors. I thought that's very interesting that you bring in the colors. I'm not as familiar with that, um, those principles, but I, I understand where they're coming from because the Negretto, I can't remember the other two. This, this Negretto, one, right? Albedo, Rubetto. Albedo. And what was the last one? Blackening, whitening, reddening. And what's that last, how do you say the last one? Rubido. Uh, Rubido, okay. Rubido. I was introduced to those, I think, through uh greg Bo gregory bogart 
Yes, in his work. Because I was in the dream, like his dream, because I had so many dreams. I went to him and mm. <laughs> said, help me understand all these dreams uh, with the astrology as well, kind of two together. And I think in one of his his works, he talked about that process. And it was the first time that I was That's awesome. brought I to did not know awareness Greg of that. Was, I mean, Greg is a very eclectic guy. Um, mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, he's yeah. drawing on some hermetic stuff there. That's that's basic alchemy. That's like right. Just and I don't know what piece alchemy. it was. It's it, it's in one of his materials. And then also Patricia Walsh, she'd done it. Uh, also shared that in a couple of her talks. Oh, from that's our great. Web. I'm I'm glad yeah. that that's being more widely disseminated now. But I think that's it's cool. in. You have to kind of be in the astrologers astrologer community kind of there. I think if you're brand yeah. new to astrology, that might be not something that you. Right. Unless you're also like yourself, the hermetic principles are right in front of you and you're studying those, right? <laughs> you know, yeah. 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 And so, so that's, that's a really basic hermetic um, process that, uh, mm -hmm. you know, alchemy consists of something old falling away and then that makes space for something new, right? You, you, you know, because if something new is trying to come in, but you're just trying to do the same old thing, mm -hmm. it, it's not going to be able to come in because there's no room for it, you see? Right. So something old has to fall away for something right. new to enter. Absolutely. And then something new entering, you, it could be as simple as, oh, aha, that's nice. Well, very cool. On with life. Same old, same old. Well, you just lost your chance to bring that new thing with you. It was just this temporary thing. Whereas mm. that's why the Rebido is about, oh, there's this new thing. And I've got to practice this and remember it and learn mm -hmm. more about it and expand it in order to make it become a part of my, a new part of my life and actually right. have a new beginning. You see? Right. Yeah. Right. I kind of like think of. I don't know. I always talk about habits and our patterns because the patterns is something that we just kind of repeat and repeat, repeat. But to get something new, we have to disrupt our pattern, right? We have exactly. to go, okay, I'm going to release this. I'm going to surrender it. But sometimes it's very challenging because especially if it's fixed signs, right? And nothing's interrupting it until, you know, you have a maybe outer planet transit coming to it and or, a retrograde, it, or a know? retrograde cycle that's or coming in it's really yeah or an eclipse absolutely these are all kind of when they come around right the timing comes around and, and that's the, but, the blessing is that it yeah. opens space for something new you know yeah. and so if you just get stuck on the oh here's the problem and i'm just mm -hmm. gonna gripe about that and just want to get back to the old same old same old you're missing out on a beautiful thing that's trying to be introduced into your life, you see? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. So Venus in Leo uh, enters, I believe, June 5th, starts, mm -hmm. just starts into Leo. Um, I'm not going to talk about the shadow pre-time, but I like the dates that you talk about of, you know, evening star. Evening those... star maximum brightness. Yeah, that's right, July 5th. Brightness. July 5th. Okay. That's really important date. July 5th. Be, I didn't have you just, just go outside in the evening right after mm -hmm. about a half an hour or so after sunset. And mm -hmm. she will be incredibly bright at that mm. time. Okay. Right. You know, incredibly bright. I love looking up in the heavens at night. Oh, I love man. that. And, you know, There's... turn off all the lights, even though I get a little bit of street light, not too bad. If I go in my backyard mm -hmm. and, um, and I know you do. You go up into right off oh, the hill. Oh yeah, I live. Dining. I live out in the country for that very reason. Yeah, yeah. You don't yeah. get a lot of the uh, the city light. That's good. not quite so much. Yeah, there's that's a good. couple street lights off a little ways, but you know, I yeah. don't have like you know this huge glow on the horizon from some urban center. Yeah, I don't have right. that. Yeah, I, I live a little bit on the edge of a city, so I'm not kind of. It's so when I have good conditions i have a beautiful sky where i live mm, for the that's most part awesome the yeah that so. experience i feel like is um that's sort of the embodiment of to me you know that's how our art was born it was born from people going out standing someplace and looking at the horizon right like that's mm -hmm. how our art came to be mm -hmm. and so when you go out and do that you're sort of recapitulating how 
the thing this thing began and that's a powerful thing you see because that's that's it's it's sort of renewing this ancient practice in your bones you it's it's sort of you know because whether you believe in past lives or whatever it the fact is that we have in our dna we have genetic memory of of thousands and thousands and thousands of years of human beings mm -hmm. doing this thing that i'm talking about going out and looking at the sky and we eventually learned how to track them you know mm -hmm. um and then we learned how to predict where they would be and so forth and this is this is really actually the beginning of science and that's why i was you know when scientists are sort of dismissive of 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 astrology i like to post this meme where it has darth vader saying you know i am your father you know it's like <laughs> because we are we're the astro astrology is the father of modern science right by observation that's, yeah absolutely observation you know? taking note observation taking note even though and so yeah i feel like there's a magical element to that act of going out and being with the sky that sort of in your bones you know that something important is happening when you do mm -hmm. that i feel like mm -hmm. it there's something embodied that can't be um accessed otherwise and so mm -hmm. and venus i mean i don't care if you live in new york city you know downtown manhattan you go out on on july 5th and look in the evening sky assuming that it's not cloudy you mm -hmm. will see her she is incredibly bright right you know and if you go down by the water you'll see this huge beam of light coming across coming, the water it's yeah. incredible that's incredible yeah, yeah yeah that's awesome and then as it gets st to this july 22nd is when it stations at 28 degrees 36 minutes and yeah and what will happen is that rather than just going back and forth venus actually forms a big loop during this mm -hmm. time and so what will happen is venus will begin to dive downward towards the star regulus mm -hmm. so there's this bright star regulus now if you're in new york city you may not be able to see regulus but you will notice that venus is kind of sort of arcing downward mm -hmm. so there's this arcing downward that happens i i actually have some photographs that i took of this particular loop back mm. in 2013 i think um, are they on your facebook uh, um, or are they I have them in I have them in a yeah, like, PDF file if you want to look at them oh okay well maybe I'll share that later but, okay um, yeah. yeah that that's interesting to kind of see the movement through the heavens I think that's really really mm -hmm. yeah and she'll be and after the station she'll gradually get dimmer and lower until she disappears right mm-hmm mm -hmm. yeah and then into the and that's the negretto like, right she's negretto. disappearing something is going away and so for beginners to astrology this process is you may be releasing something or you may be particularly some in the leo house of your chart right like right yeah. there's something about the leo house of your chart for me i'm an aquarius rising so that would be in the seventh house you don't want to be too simplistic about it because seventh house is like relationships so oh my god i'm gonna get divorced well no not necessarily i mean it can be seventh house can be your your romantic partners for sure but it can also be your best friend mm -hmm. it can also be enemies mm -hmm. um yeah, it can because also it's be, illegal. yeah it can also be lawyers because lawyers are your best friend in court <laughs> you know you yeah. see so there's like yeah. several ways that the seventh house can show up so any house that you're you know just kind of look at the general significations and see is anything changing with regard to this house mm -hmm. oh it, th th oh this is what's changing okay so this is changing for a reason there's a purpose to it and if you sort of open up to that and you don't resist whatever's changing Mm -hmm. you just say oh okay this wants to change but it's bringing something new in and then you go mm -hmm. okay well i'm gonna let this go mm -hmm. and then i'm gonna look for okay what what about the seventh house you know again for me is showing up that wasn't there before you gotta mm -hmm. look for it right and you gotta right. you gotta say okay that's uh, you know that feels good right venus if it feels good do it 
and right. uh, and and then you bring the new in, and then you kind of, okay, how do I, how do I make this real? How do I keep make it stay in my life? Mm -hmm. This right. new thing. And that's that's the rubido. If it's stationing, I know I've had clients where, in past Venus retrograde cycles, where it's stationed on someone's planet or angle. Or for yeah, myself, that's... for this particular Venus at twenty eight degrees is stationing right on my lot of fortune and that's in my fifth house yeah that's my, my jupiter's at 26 so it's not far off my jupiter yeah yeah so it's yeah. kind of interesting that it's stationing right on that point in my chart and the lot of fortune there's a lot that goes on with that but um i think it's interesting because at that time like a few days later at, when it's in it's truly moving in movement of the retrograde yeah. um i'm flying off to Hawaii to take my daughter with a view of a college that she wants to go to. So it's kind of like, this oh, is like a, the pre. Well, that is a letting go up. as a mother, isn't it? it? it it's going to be a hard trip because of, you know, looking at like, okay, this is where she's going to be going. I mean, we're a couple years away because she's only a sophomore, right? Okay. So I, I think it's so interesting that it's kind of timed on this like preview this. of the empty <laughs> nest i know it's so nerve-wracking <laughs> so uh yeah well, it's a beautiful thing though too right yeah, like yeah. you're gonna it's get kind of something like new bold. out of it you're gonna yeah. you're gonna hatch a a full-grown woman into the world yes you yes. know and that's and an I incredible think thing it's a very visual kind of being there seeing where she's going to be going the neighborhoods the the campus and these kinds of things. And she wants to settle there. She wants, I mean, she also wants to work there. I think she wants to go to school there and work there. She's just wow. so drawn there, which is interesting. We'll see because, you know, it's, it's um, Oahu, but I don't know if it'll be Oahu that she, she wants to be a marine biologist. So it's kind of interesting that that's retrograde is kind of introducing this to me. And what's mm -hmm. interesting in addition is her rising sign is like nine Leo. And so Venus gets, goes to 12, 12 degrees up where it stations direct, right? So it's right uh -huh. near her angle and in yep. her first house. So there's some kind of real A interesting process. Version yeah. of herself that she's mm -hmm. birthing. And that's pretty typical. You know, the first house, you think about it in Jungian terms, Jungian psychology, we talk about the persona is mm -hmm. like this mask that we wear. But that mm -hmm. sounds sort of abstract. I like to think of it more as like hats that we wear. Yeah. You know, people say, oh, I wore a lot of hats today. You're wearing the hat of a mother, of a podcaster, of an astrologer. Yeah. I know your cat's around somewhere. So you're a fur baby <laughs> mama too. Fur baby and, mama. Right? You have a lot of, you have a yeah. lot of hats that you wear. Yeah. And, and all of us do. And so, yeah. but she's got a new hat that mm -hmm. she's going to be. And that, and that, right. that activation of that horoscopos that rising degree mm -hmm. is showing that very clearly mm -hmm. there's a new hat to put on here right because it's kind of feeding information before and the vision before she actually truly does make the big leap and yeah yeah so that's i think it's so fascinating and i'll be very observant and you know participating in like hmm, how's this shifting what's what's coming up to let go, what's what's kind of wants to have shape, you know? And mm -hmm. uh, that will be an interesting process this time around. Yeah. Well, the fact that it's Venus also is interesting because, you know, for a woman, I think, you know, Venus is more about her personal identity. You know, for a man, mm -hmm. it's kind of like the inner feminine. So it's more, mm -hmm. it's a little more, it's a little less, I don't know, obvious or, or direct, you know, but for mm -hmm. a woman, Venus is, you know, really like who mm -hmm. she is. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's interesting that it's coming up very personally for her too. Right. Mm -hmm. Because right. that's really what she is working on is what's my identity as a woman in the world. Right. Marine biologist. Right. Right. And then we come back from that trip and then it's still, well, it stations direct September 3rd. So it's still in the retrograde cycle. When we come back, she starts school as a junior in high school and goes mm -hmm. off. And she actually is participating in this thing called Running Start or something, 
where they get to go to the university to take class course coursework as a high school student and get wow. credits. So she's really kind of reframing who she, who she is in her mind and what she's capable of. And she's she's starting small. She's starting with one class, and then we'll add on as she goes. But it's it's great that she got accepted. But it's it's an interesting redefinition of who she is in that that Venus in the first house is so fascinating to me there you go yeah. that's textbook wow what a great yeah. example there <laughs> it's I, I did it just kind of came to mind when we we're talking it's like oh yeah that's all kind of hitting her chart because I was thinking I was being selfish and thinking of my chart <laughs> well you know <laughs> Aries Aries that's what we do <laughs> yeah so. and here's the thing about that like if you go back eight years right mm -hmm. um there would have been a Venus retrograde eight years ago that would have also hit mm. this because it shifts by about two and a half degrees each time. So it would have been near the same part of your chart eight years ago as well. Right. And so that would that have been what, 2014? That... Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think I went to Hawaii with my husband in 2014 for business, for, for we, the company that I was working with. So I kind of. Oh, wow. Uh, went there myself at that point. So this is kind of an interesting, I didn't even yeah. think about the eight, the eight year cycle and where that was back and what that meant. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. I got to go with my work, but I got to go to Maui first. And then we got to go to the next year. I think 2015, we went to Kona, uh, the big Island, uh, again. So it was kind of like two times going to Hawaii when I first started this firm, it was amazing. It was like, I'm getting spoiled here. What's going on in my chart? This is amazing. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Good. Yeah. So that's very, very interesting about the eight year cycle as well for people to kind of reflect like what's, what's coming from that period of time and reflecting yes. what's bringing coming again. Yeah. Uh, eight years forward. Right. Are you speaking to like the Venus star concept when you're sharing pretty that much. or yes. pretty much? Okay. Yes. There is um, th there's something called a Venus star point. And what, I mean, what that's referring to, I'm just looking to see here if I have the visual to go with that. Let's it's see. It's how Venus forms the pentagram in the yeah, heavens. Yeah, she forms a pentagram in the, the sky, cycle. right? Mm -hmm. And so there's, there's, there's five. Uh, ah, here it is. Yeah. So the last retrograde in this part of the sky would have been, yeah, 2015. Oh, 2015. Um, okay. Yeah. And, and so the currently there are five, well, there's always five signs that Venus will do her retrogrades in. Mm -hmm. And currently those signs are, uh, Leo, uh, the, the previous one was Capricorn, right? So, mm -hmm. right. So there's Capricorn, Leo, Aries, uh, Scorpio and Gemini. Mm -hmm. Those are the five mm -hmm. signs that, and they, and each point is revisited on about an eight year interval. So yeah, if you look, if you look back in the summer of 2015, there might've been something from that, Awa, from that Hawaii mm -hmm. trip that right. was, that was coming back up and stuff. Um, right. Because I think we went to Hawaii actually in like February of 2015. Mm-hmm. Because mm -hmm. I started in 2014, yeah. So that's kind of interesting about the eight-year cycle. But what, it, what's fascinating is, I mean, I know my daughter since fifth grade, fourth grade has wanted to go to school in Hawaii. She's like, ah, oh. well, as soon as I wow. mentioned, like, yeah, you can go to college anywhere you want. She goes, I can go to Hawaii. I'm like, yes, you can go to Hawaii if you want. And she's and like, that just was it. on. That was it. She just <laughs> took that little nut, tucked it away. It's like. I'm going nice. and it's been that way since that moment. So, uh, and she's, you know, she's got five planets in Scorpio and a marine biologist mm. interest though yeah, that they're at the bottom cool. of her chart, but Leo rising. Right. So it's kind of interesting how she'll put it to work, but she's also into robotics. And this year we're going to an event for her because she won regional for her ROV mate stuff, which is robotics. So she's kind of a double major kind of interest, wow. um, which is well, interesting. Well, I mean, that comes in handy if you want to explore the sea, you know, yeah. those little robot things. Yeah, they, yeah. They do it's a pretty good job as a tool. Of that. Yeah, yes. right? So interesting. Now, Uranus is in Taurus. Jupiter's in Taurus. Mercury yeah. right now is in Taurus. The sun's in Pluto's Taurus Pluto's right in now. Aquarius. Yeah. And Pluto's in Aquarius. So we have this kind of interesting 
mix of fixed sign energy. At the point that Venus is in Leo, though, I believe Pluto will have backed up into Capricorn. Well, that's true. Yeah, Pluto is backing right? back into Capricorn. Yeah, that's true. But so the, the nodes, main source of tension will be from Taurus. But it'll be from Taurus, right? Yeah. And um, absolutely will square to the Uranus during that cycle because Uranus yeah. is about 1920 or something yep, right now. That's correct. She'll, yeah. so she'll do a three. So that's going to be challenging your relationship with technology, right? Mm -hmm. Uranus is the planet of technology. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, I, I'm sorry, but who over the age of 30, 40 isn't challenged by technology? Because I didn't grow up fast. with this crap. And it's constantly <laughs> changing, you know? Right. And, yes. you know, it's like, ugh, I mean, it's so yeah but that's going to highlight and and it's going and so you know think about it the pro the the principle of attraction and or repulsion right mm -hmm. some people have a repulsion with technology or but here's the thing about uranus you know how the glyph kind of has these two mm -hmm. wings and they go both ways mm -hmm. i mean think about it when people when cell phones first came out people were like oh my god they're incredible this little thing and it tells you where to go and it tells you where to eat and it tells you all this stuff and oh my god and then they go oh my god you know it's surveilling me and like it's giving me you know and it, right it's like both sides it, of the coin yes yeah yeah, right? yeah yeah so it's challenge so venus is about the the principle of attraction and repulsion and with with uranus in you know in square I think it has to do with our relationship with technology and where mm -hmm. are we, where do we need to let go of some of that stuff? You know, mm -hmm. a lot of people are concerned that AI is a very, is not a great thing. Mm -hmm. You're probably right. Most technology has a light side and a dark side. There's probably mm -hmm. some issues, but right. is it going to be the end of the world? Probably not. No. You know, It'll, so, that we have to, but it's moving faster, and it and is. there's like I work in the tech industry during the day. I'm a tech recruiter for a oh, wow. consulting firm, so I I'm not super tech. I mean, I I can do a few things, but I'm not a coder. My daughter can code, you know. Wow. My dad can code. I don't code. Yeah. Um, I hire people who do, and uh, so I keep up on some things, but it's more from the keeping businesses going and things like that. That help us have jobs and things like that so I'm, I'm kind of in that frame but ai is you know yeah there's a lot of fear around it and how fast it's moving and how fast are we understanding what how it shifts and things like that uh -huh. and some certain i guess with the pluto for 20 years in aquarius it'll be an an awakening of what's our re what's our relationship there and how far away do we get from the natural world and how that we have to be very careful. Like we should be using it as a tool and not where it just takes, where we just hand everything right. off either. Yeah, so, like, oh, let it write my paper for me. Yeah, I, mean, I, I know, know. I can't on, do that. You know? <laughs> yeah, right. But, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm making images through this mid journey thing. Have mm -hmm. you heard about that? I've heard of it, but I have not made images. It's So it's, if you go on Discord, there's a bot, you know, an AI bot that's called mm -hmm. mid journey. And you mm -hmm. can just tell it like, and what's interesting is like, if you get really deep down the rabbit hole with some of this hermetic stuff, you know, there's mm -hmm. a lot of these, you know, for the decans, for instance, you know, like when Venus was in the first decan of cancer, she's mm -hmm. decan, by the way, is 10 degrees, right? So the right. first 10 degrees of cancer, Venus rules that. Mm -hmm. And that is corresponds to the tarot card, the two of cups. Mm -hmm. So I went in there and I typed into, you know, the thing, you know, two cups with an angel and uh, this and that. And I tried oh, a few different something. combinations and it generated these incredible images, you know, that for, mm. for, and so now I have like some images that I can use when that alignment is. And I'm, I'm thinking about maybe even the next time that there's a really good, you know, where Venus is in there and there's not any of this other crazy stuff that we have now, like Mars opposite Pluto or whatever. Right. I might even, <laughs> I might even upload it to the blockchain and make an NFT out of it mm -hmm. or something like that. Because you know? it's almost like a talisman, like It is wearing. actually, yeah, it is. I, I have found yeah. that those, you know, yeah, 
or you could just you know print it out and you know mm -hmm. there's a lot of things you could do but it's i i mean i couldn't make the kind of images that this thing makes i'm not i'm not an artist but i have mm -hmm. this new tool and, and that's like, something that you enjoy you know, what it created I and mean, if you behold it and what was created there's some and i think it's also important when you created it that made it powerful right exactly That's oh yes <laughs> i made sure i made sure that i got venus rising as mm -hmm. i was typing it in there right so mm -hmm. absolutely yeah. yeah and so wow i mean actually you know now that you mention it i said that venus was going to be retrograde in my seventh house with my jupiter right jupiter is about mm -hmm. expansion and so what did i do i got a partner <laughs> i got a new partner who happens to be an ai bot <laughs> <laughs> that that expanded my artistic capabilities through technology right right but wow. you as an individual appreciated what was created yeah oh my god yes yeah, yeah. so i think yeah. that's important because there's some value that you received in what and was that's created. what venus is about value beauty right yeah. the beauty she of it right i i just wrote about that in my newsletter the other day for the the new moon about our uh, the importance of beauty in our life and and that to me is venus and how Absolutely. you know it's what you need what your soul needs and also having you know creating space to be spontaneous because sometimes the creation needs to be spontaneous because yeah. of what you might need you may we may think what we might need but there's stuff that we don't even realize would be fulfilling and fill up our cup just, yeah, you know, and I that's think very that's much what it was like too, value. Sarah, because I had a whole lot of work that was kind of like, you know, just like abstract, like data and this and that. And I was like, oh my God, I need to just like, I need to just do something creative. And so mm -hmm. I actually like took a break from that. And I was like, and I just looked, I saw the chart and I was like, well, you know, Venus is rising and I've got this new tool and I'm like, why not try it? And that's mm -hmm. what happened. I just spontaneously said, okay, I'm going to play. And I literally was just playing with the AI bot as a mm -hmm. way to like relax my brain from all this net analytical. Right. Uh, right. Just and I fun. ended up having this incredible experience and got these beautiful images out of it too. So it kind of right. did, you know, all, <laughs> more than one job at once. Yeah. It was pretty incredible. That's wow. a, I like that. What so, a great my, story. so my, so evidently my shadow of the retrograde happened pretty early mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and I had to, what I had to let go of what oh you know what I had to let go of mm. there I'm not super technical because I'm like Gen X man I wasn't born with this stuff I didn't have a computer until I got married mm -hmm. you know like at 30 mm -hmm. and so I had to let go of ask my 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 stubbornness of asking for help so there's this young man that that I was working with and uh, he had mentioned the mid journey thing. And I was like, can you show me how to do that? And he's like, yeah. Mm -hmm. So we got on the That's Zoom cool. thing. But that, yeah, yeah. And so there's the seventh house again, right? He, That's I partnered good. with yeah. somebody and he mm -hmm. was my, you know, best friend for. Showed you. Know, you. Showed yeah. me the ropes and whatever. And then right. I had this thing that I could play with. Yeah. So, wow, that's incredible. Yeah, I didn't even realize. So, yeah, there's mm -hmm. there's new experiences that you can have with technology these days. Mm -hmm. I mean, you don't have to look very far. Right. It depends on what you want to do, though, right? I mean, you right. wanted to create an image because uh, you're so fond of images and imagery. Yeah. Uh, I just know that from your photography and what you create yeah. in your photography. It's amazing what you do with yeah. that. Yeah, and I wanted and... to have them to share with my people, you know, mm -hmm. so that, you know, if you know, if somebody, you know, wants to bring that energy into their life, I can mm -hmm. just put an image there with and say, hey, use this image to meditate on or print it out and put it on your mm -hmm. wall or whatever. And they have mm -hmm. like a window into that energy, mm -hmm. to, you know, mm -hmm. and so, wow. So, yeah, but the other side is there's some part of technology that is not working for you and is not actually healthy and mm -hmm. you might need to let go of. Right. As well. And right? yeah, I got, I lost my access to Facebook uh, probably a little over a year ago, I think. And then I was out for like eight months. 
Wow. And then by a Neptune transit, Neptune, I don't know. I just like, whoop, here I am in the portal again. I got in. I don't know how I remember how I did it. But uh, I just tried one day. I'm like, well, Neptune has this, it's really opening for me no in my kidding. own chart. Yeah, I kind of used astrology to see if it would work, and it sure did. I was like, I was so locked. <laughs> I was locked out forever. I was like, I can't figure out the two two factor authentication issue that had come up and i'm like it's over my head nobody will help you you can't talk to anybody at my at um at facebook and so i just kind of gave up for a while and then i was like you know what i'm gonna maybe use my astrology to see a good point because of how my chart is and neptune as being like the open gate all gates open kind of thing mm. sure enough i whoop, fell in wow. but it helped me break the habit of facebook that i had being yes. out for that long and then i kind of you use Instagram differently with the social media. And so, um, yeah, so me and tech have an interesting love hate relationship. Maybe yeah, not that's hate, the but other thing. Our it's habits challenging, with right? Technology, right? Are very, you know, it's again, it's a tool, but if it becomes this thing that you're just habitually, mm -hmm. you know, using to feed some kind of emotional whatever that's not right. oh, that's it's not, not really healthy. Great. Yeah, that's no, not so, a great relationship. so it helped break that pattern and you know, and then how I, I tried to use it in different ways for the astrology work is like, well, I'm, I was using it incorrectly and then it would change the algorithm. Like, I'm like, I can't figure this stuff out. And so, and then I just like, well, what do, what do, what do you do, Sarah, when you want to go find out about astrology yourself? I'm like, well, I go to YouTube. So I'm like, well, that's what I have to do. I'm just going to do the thing, <laughs> go to YouTube and just be there, share a little bit on the other ones, but may have one more place that it's just like where I center it all. So because I just I get I got so frustrated with it because I'm like I have a day job and astrology is part time for me. Uh, I'm not a full time astrologer. Some people are full time astrologers. So, um, and God bless them because <laughs> it's a uh, it's, yeah. It's, it's a, a life, lot easier uh, nowadays to be a full time astrologer. When I started out, it was very difficult, man. Yeah. And in how fact, long ago you did know, you start? I well, I went full time back around 2006. I was part time for quite some time. I, I worked in the mental health field. I was a counselor mm -hmm. in mm -hmm. mental health because a That's I knew it would help me with my astrology. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and b yeah. you know, and but you know, I made sure that I had my mortgage paid off before I tried to become a professional astrologer because I didn't know like. You know, and it was, it was kind of hard. It was kind of lean yeah, there for a little while. Yeah, because your mortgage but, payment's huge. You know, and in 2008, I think I mentioned my friend Kelly Lee Phipps. He was one of the first mm -hmm. podcasters. And when mm -hmm. I started podcasting, there was like five of us. If I, I can remember mm -hmm. on iTunes, there was like five astrology podcasts. Five. You was at, was. Me at, at, and three of us were in Asheville. It was me, <laughs> Kelly, his student, Kelly. Benjamin. There was a lady named Dina DiCastro. I'm not oh, remembering the other okay. person. I'm not remembering who the other one was, but there was literally like five of us, you know, when I started okay. out in, in 2008. And it was wow. the Goddess Astrology podcast because I wanted to talk about Venus, you know. Venus, yeah. <laughs> and then later. You've been on but, there a long time then doing your podcast. Yeah, since 2008, you know. And so, but, mm -hmm. you know it really may i mean you know that thing it goes out all over the world right and the next thing i know i had people from australia and and all of this stuff and it was mm -hmm. just incredible and so the the technology mm -hmm. has made it way more easier to be because you're not just pulling from your local thing mm -hmm. or or like i used to drive to you know various places and give and of course i would get you know more people that way but all of a sudden with the podcast now it's not just my local and wherever I can drive, it's like literally right. all over the world, the world. Yeah. which is so. Right. And you have traction different. over a long period of time, which helps build because it takes time to build. It takes time. Yeah. And if you're not traveling and if you're not doing it full time, I mean, when you're just some people are part time like myself and. Yeah. And that's um, OK. Because my day job pays the bills, going to pay for the college education for my daughter and all these things. So. <laughs> 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 but yeah. it is my passion and it did change my life. So I know it changes people's lives. And I think when you practice and you read for people and you're, con you're doing consultations for people, I learn so much more just from that activity. You learn by doing. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like yeah. I said, 
you know, I started out learning by just writing down my transits and then writing down what happened and going, aha, mm -hmm. you know, this is, yeah, what, that's what I did for... this is what Mars looks like for me. This is what Jupiter mm -hmm. looks like for me, you know? Yeah. Yep. So yeah, yeah, you learn by doing and you just, if Absolutely. you can only do it part time, you do it part time and yeah. but you learn. And then, yeah, yeah, for me, I, I got laid off twice in within about a year. Oh, so that it kind of opened the doors for you to like, and, 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 and I was like, and the thing is the first time I got laid off, I had a job within a day because I was so good at what I did and I was mm -hmm. so connected. I just went, okay, get another job. Yeah. I almost did the same thing the second time. And then I stopped and said, you know, maybe this is happening for a reason, you know, it's like, opening the door. It's like, Gary. and I said, and then I thought about it and I was like, you know, if I'm ever going to do this astrology thing full time, I think it's now. Yeah. And, uh, it was, yeah. it was a little early, but it was, it was just about the right time because of the podcasting mm -hmm. thing was starting and that's great, this, you know? Yeah. So yeah. Yeah, it's I funny love how, how that works. You've kind of created it uh, with the tears in your podcast. That's really cool. Um, yeah, I learned that from Michael Luton. Michael Luton <laughs> taught me that. Michael Luton yeah. in, in New York, he's a really famous astrologer. With uh, He wrote a piece on for Vanity Fair about Pluto and Capricorn. He just totally nailed what Pluto and Capricorn was going to be about. Mm -hmm. But he was like, yeah, he was like, Gary, you need, you know, you need to have like some materials that you put together and then people, you know, pay for those. And then you have, you know, a regular income because, right. you know, when you're, when you're just seeing people and I don't know why, particularly for me, it's feast and famine. Like everybody wants a reading this week and next week, nobody, like, you know what That's I'm saying? Normal. It's like, because of the patterns of the cycles, right? So, well, you know, and so. So I was like, well, shoot, you know, that will, that'll even out the curves, right? Because I'll be mm -hmm. getting that regular, that uh -huh. regular income in between. Mm -hmm. And then I just kind of kept going with it. So I would put together these reports and tell people about what was going on. And then I augmented the reports with like classes and different stuff and mm -hmm. people get discounts for, you know, for readings and stuff so that if they want to, you know, mm -hmm. because some people, they like to see me monthly or some people mm -hmm. even for for a time i'll talk right. to weekly you know and if that's right. the case it's worth it for them to pay a little more each month and then they have access to like a reduced rate for right. the multiple times you know so right. yeah i tried to make it something where it, it gave people a a bargain and it right accessible yeah, right yeah right. people right. seem no, to have um responded to it that's awesome. Do you align some of the things in when you're launching something to? Oh yeah, to your, you know, I, I launched, don't know with Venus involved or because Venus well, is connected to our money, but I don't know for sure. I launched my website when Jupiter was in Sagittarius, for instance. You know, because I have Aries, I have Aries Sun and Jupiter in Leo, and mm -hmm. Sagittarius is like the trying to use the fire, right? <laughs> yeah, and yep. so and 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 you know that. And I still have the same website and it's still, it's always done it's really like, well yeah. for me, you know? Right. Yeah. I'll use a Venus election. Like if there's something that I want to do where everybody getting along is important, mm -hmm. you know, Building if it's rapport. a team kind of thing or, mm -hmm. or something or yeah. Or if I want to um, do like creative stuff, like imagery or, mm -hmm. um, or with the photography or whatever, mm -hmm. you know, I'll use an election and that's, you know, that can get really complicated. Mm -hmm. Um, but you know, the, the simplest thing is, oh, Venus is in, you know, blank sign mm -hmm. and that's, you know, this house in my chart. And so right. it's a time it's to, compliment. yeah, yeah. It's time to work on that stuff. And then you, but you can get, you know, really complicated with it where, you know, Venus is rising in her dignity and she's getting an aspect from the moon right, and it's right. like, ah, da -da. it's like this, the heavens right. are speaking. You know? but not everybody can do that every day. Right. It's kind of like, I, I tend to use the easier ones too, for the, you know, where is she, where, what is she complimenting just by where she sits in the house and what that might be, um, supporting and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 And just That's keeping, good. because, you know, 
other than when she's retrograde, she tends to switch signs about once a month, right? And mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. you know, just having that rhythm of like, okay, here she is and she's in, you know, like when she's in cancer, you know, for me, like I know this, that um, just being supportive of people who are having emotional sensitivities and just, mm -hmm. you know, just saying, hey, you know, I'm here for you if you need somebody right. or, or whatever. and people really appreciating that even if they don't follow up and it turns right. out several people that i offered that to they didn't need act they didn't actually need it but i think just knowing it was there was kind of nice right knowing you that know? the support is there. knowing that yeah. the support's there and so yeah. it's that kind of thing you know and when venus is in leo you know leo is famously a very creative sign but it's also mm -hmm. famously like a very dynamic sign it's a fire sign mm -hmm. and so being sort of willing to just go uh, be be like spontaneous mm -hmm. and stuff with right. if, if it feels good in your gut you say oh that's beautiful let's go see that <laughs> right you know right kind of thing and being right. you know because we should really feel, because Venus to me is a the personal planet, and we should really feel like it's getting activated in us and oh, yeah, that relationship, yeah. But, yeah. Yeah, so being more spontaneous, being more creative, you know, being more artistic, cho choosing, you know, choosing to, to make things beautiful when you can, you know, choosing mm -hmm. to. I was just outside the other day, and I was like, you know, I need to bring some flowers into my office. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Just yeah. so that, you know, that, that little, mm -hmm. the, those little things where you're just, you know, you're tuned into the beauty and you choose the beauty way. It keeps mm -hmm. you connected to that Venusian energy. Mm -hmm. um, and it keeps you like from just, you know, because without beauty, without creativity, things can just become kind of dry and sterile. And mm -hmm. it just, over time, it's like, it just, dries out and it becomes sort of sterilized and you and right. you look around and you, you feel kind of bored or you feel kind of lifeless and it's like well this sucks well yeah you need yeah, a venus because... an infusion of venus <laughs> something right yeah absolutely. yeah exactly yeah. sensuality yeah. of life the beauty of life the things mm -hmm. that make it all worth living you know that's exactly venus. yeah yeah so when venus stations direct september third and kind of I think that's at twelve degrees of Leo and moves forward. I don't know at that point in time if there's any aspects I wanted to point out. I know that the Venus at the station when she stays in retrograde at the twenty eight is Well I she's at twelve degrees one. of Leo when she stations so you know she'll be square to Jupiter when she's direct stationed. That's right. On September 3rd. Yeah, she's square yeah. to Jupiter. And from my point of view here, in on, I'm in the Tri-Cities of Washington State on the West Coast. She's near the angle. She's on the seventh house cusp over here mm -hmm. at that stationing moment. So Yeah, so um, she's stationed retrograde square to Uranus. Yes. So stationed <laughs> direct square to Jupiter. Yeah, so there's like, and Venus as the ruler of the Taurus that, Jupiter's in is kind of the interesting relationship, right? Yeah, so. and that's that brings up an interesting um, situation that in in classical astrology we call that reception. Mm -hmm. So Venus is the ruler; she's like the queen of Taurus, right? That's my right. house. That's my place. Right. Well, if someone comes to your home your response what do you do you're oh would you like something to drink would you like something to eat would you like right. to sit down you know you try to accommodate them right so it's venus's job to accommodate jupiter when he's in taurus so mm -hmm. what's interesting is that even though there's a square because of mm -hmm. this reception it's mm -hmm. that square energy is a little bit less yeah. because she's like oh yeah. she, she'll be a little more accommodating to jupiter because he's in her home right. right and so there will still be some tension but it's it's probably a little more manageable mm -hmm. and a little more um you know that she's that she's willing to do it because there's a social reason to do it you right. know 
So right. that's actually helpful. Yeah, that Venus is in her sign. Mm -hmm. That'll take the edge off a little bit. But I imagine that, um, you know, with Leo being a fixed fire, right? And, and Taurus being fixed earth, there might be, you know, t typically with Jupiter, the downside of Jupiter is trying to do too much or, or too mm -hmm. much of a good thing, you know? Mm -hmm. So there might be this sort of right. And the, and when she stations direct, she's being reborn as morning star. So we're in the Rebido phase. So mm -hmm. you might say, oh, my God, I let something go. Like Gary said, you know, in the in the in the when the retrograde station, then I had this beautiful creative insight and this thing I'm really excited about. And I'm ready to conquer the world, you know, mm -hmm. and I'm ready to just take this thing out. And I, I want to create this huge thing and it's going to be amazing. And it's like that takes time mm -hmm. right and so it might be that there's this big expectation of wanting to just have it all right now right because fire signs mm -hmm. tend to be that way they kind of want it all <laughs> and they want it right now <laughs> dynamic and then taurus is like well you know we kind of need to take a step at a time and you know right. we'll eventually we'll get this. there so yeah. that's the square right mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. um very nice. And um, yeah, and so it might be that there's this really big thing that feels really great and it's really inspiring, but you're going to have to uh, be more methodical and plotting about getting it fully right. manifested. And, and when when Venus comes out of the retrograde, the Sun and Mercury in Virgo, so uh, there's kind of the trine between oh, that's Jupiter nice. and That'll and be Mercury an excellent and Sun assist for so, manifesting yeah for, yeah absolutely yeah mm -hmm. so i think that's interesting i think it maybe the the energy is a little challenging july 22nd when it go stations retrograde because it, the nodes also change at that moment from the taurus over to just a few days before that on july 17th to mm. uh, aries north node very mm. individual fiery mm -hmm. energy and mm -hmm. then Libra is the South Node. So there is a releasing kind of going on yes. around those relationship themes and things. It's kind of interesting. Mm -hmm. And at the same time that it's stationing, uh, the Sun is at 29 Cancer and Pluto is at 29 Capricorn. It's a very dynamic chart, mm -hmm. uh, even though yeah. Venus is stationing at, at 28. Yeah, so that's that... going to be a very interesting week. <laughs> right so. yeah and again i think the key is to not freak out mm -hmm. and uh you know make things worse by freaking out but to be aware oh okay something is clearly changing mm -hmm. something is asking for my attention hello mm -hmm. i'm paying attention i'm not going to overreact though i'm not gonna like just ah oh, you know and right. make things worse I'm just right. going to be like, okay, clearly something's going on, but I know that all, you know, good things, you know, come about because, you know, something else was allowed to be released and let go. And so I'm going to start thinking and feeling into, okay, what's going on here that I can afford to let go of? Right. Where, you know, right. and, um, and just, you know, kind of, and I think there's an interesting aspect of Venus that doesn't get, get talked about a lot. But if you are really a creative person, there's a kind of confidence that comes with that. That whatever happens, well, mm -hmm. we'll 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 flow with it. We'll we'll be right. creative. We'll figure. It may not be a Picasso, right. but we'll make right. a meal out of it. Right. You know. Yes. And the and yes. and there there's kind of a of a of a of a sense of surety that comes with with knowing that you have a creative response to life. And I think, you know, resting in that and just, you know, assessing the situation and, and figuring out, okay, what's going on and what are my options and all this stuff instead of just like, ah, and, you know, <laughs> immediately trying to fix it. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Cause sometimes it depends on our own nativity, how we're in, we're, involved in that cosmic movement right and and i think that's important we do that as astrologers to point that out to people it's like well this is a, a phase that you're in there's other things that we look at you know progressions and you know arcs and things like that um but you know yeah it's always wise to kind of take take note take inventory where are you 
you know, he's still in the body. Yeah, you're still in the body. What crayon <laughs> do I have the color with? Right, <laughs> you know, what am I working uh, with? Okay, right, right, you know. <laughs> exactly. Right. And what's the invitation that might be coming? What's emerging? That's the biggest right. part. Yeah. What's the yeah. invitation here? And what, what, yeah. what, you know, what possibilities might this open? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm willing to work with it rather than just trying to push it away and just keep right. the same old, same old. Right. Right. Yeah. Right. A lot of the listeners to my podcast are beginners, the first year, second year, maybe students and, um, and others who've been doing it for some time that I've come to connect with me over the years. Um, what kind of resources? I, this is a question I ask all the, right. on the podcast. What kind of resources do you like uh, with this theme or other themes for astrology that so you like to share? So specifically in terms of Venus, this is a great one. Venus Ariel Star Gutman. Rising yep. by Ariel Gutman. Mm -hmm. Incredible book, incredible mm -hmm. lady, incredible wisdom. It'll give you this kind of eight year, you know, sense of the where the Venus conjunctions with the sun are happening and there's a lot of history in there. It's really mm -hmm. incredible. If you want to get a little bit deeper into the Venus cycle of mm -hmm. like morning star, evening star and stuff, the light of Venus by my really good friend, Adam Gainsburg, wonderful great resource. Book. I have that one on my book. Neither yeah. one of those are particularly beginner, yeah. but they are Venus related. Now good I'm going to yeah. show you the first couple books that I ever got as an yeah. astrologer. Astrology for the mill. Oh, Grant Louie. Yes. Grant Louie. Yeah. Yes, you, great. Back in the day, when I, I well, after the I great figured cover. out, I love that cover. I, I know, right? After I figured Beautiful. out, um, this is the hardback version. You can yeah. find the paperback. I mean, back in the day, you could find the paperback for like five bucks, and that's what I was doing, right? So I had this vision, and I was like, okay, how am I going to do this? So I would just go to the used bookstore every Friday, payday, whatever, and I'd be mm -hmm. like, okay, I've got five bucks. I'm gonna I'm gonna buy whatever astrology book I can find for five bucks. So I got Grant Louie. Uh, yeah. There's another one called Heaven Knows What. I don't, it doesn't have it as interesting a cover. Uh -huh. It's right. Heaven Knows What. These Who are my that? first two astrology books. Grant Louie also. Grant Louie as well. So mm -hmm. those are really nice. cool. Those were your first astrology books? Those are my That's first great. two. Yeah. I love yeah. to hear what the first ones were. <laughs> oh, great, great, great. Yeah. This is a wonderful book. Oh, I have that one too. Astrology yes. for yourself. Demetra George, yes. incredible mm -hmm. resource because it's a workbook. It's yeah, like I it's said, great. it's about, you know, journaling and, and like mm -hmm. just take, keeping track and, and just, um, practicing, you know? Yes. So that's it, how you get it. That's how you really yep. get to understand yourself with this it. This is one that's not so well known, but it's uh, the Watkins Astrology Handbook by Lynn Oh, Lindbergh. I don't have that one. Watkins it, Astrology it, Handbook. It's really good, like general. Um, it has sort of, let me see if I can show. It has sort of diagrams with Very nice. words and, yeah. and stuff. And the, yeah, because it uh, takes time to integrate all of the archetypal in information yeah yeah and so mm -hmm. i like that one a lot now for those who are a little bit more advanced this book is incredible on the heavenly, oh, on spheres, the heavenly spheres i have that one Ribeiro. It's very good. oh my god Louis Ribeiro. Great. unfortunately Great we lost helena a few mm. years back but Louis is still around and this is an incredible book that is a good um, book. it's a little bit more advanced so for those of you yeah. who are ready to get a little bit more technical that one <laughs> is stuff. incredible yeah that's awesome so well, uh, thank you for sharing your resources yeah you're are, welcome those are great books um i know that i mean i have books and books and books i mean i, I think I, my, my library is like 400 or something now i don't 300 <laughs> and something i read i mean i i studied on my own for three years before i went to a teacher so wow yeah yeah i did um, too yeah but it, and then I, I was like oh i kind of have I've got some of this now. <laughs> so then I felt that I could go out there and mm -hmm. sit with the teacher. Then I kind of got guided towards Stephen Forrest stuff. So, oh, um, nice. yeah. Any websites or other things that you uh, like to look at now online? Because we're such an digital age. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff. You know, what's interesting, you know, I, for a long time, I don't actually have a cell phone. So for a long time, like Twitter and Instagram wow. were not available yeah. to me. Right. Um, but now you can actually get on there through the web browser. So I recently right. got on Twitter like about a 
a year ago there's a lot of astrologers on twitter and there's a there lot are. of really cool stuff on there so yes. i mean like that's one thing um mm -hmm. you know there's a lot of cool people on facebook too you know i'm on mm -hmm. there yeah gemini groups. brett and yep um, gemini's yeah, very prominent on facebook <laughs> groups and stuff let's see websites in particular uh geez it's been a while you know i have a lot of resources that i use but that are a little bit more advanced you know in terms of beginner stuff yeah well uh, sorry i don't really have it's been a few years since the beginner been... stuff for you huh <laughs> <laughs> i the I, the reason i ask that question is because sometimes teachers or people count who are counseling others will have like beginner stuff that they feed off to their uh, folks that come to them oh, for right, right, yeah, yeah. information. So I always, yeah, so, I never know what might come through the mix that I haven't well, uh, yeah, one collected of my, myself. One of my students who does, uh, you know, beginners level classes, Jamie Goldstein, uh, Jamie Lee, I think is what she goes by on Facebook. And uh, mm -hmm. let's see, I'm trying to remember what exactly the name of her business is, but if you just type in Jamie Goldstein astrologer you'll probably find her probably find she her. does a lot of good beginner level classes and stuff nice. so you can and one uh, of your she own does, students yeah she's one of my students yeah. she's she yeah. she's really good sorry that's I'm, okay. I'm a little that's great no I just like to kind of that. put it out there it's always it's like the net I information there's so much volume of information it's kind of like what people appreciate yeah. especially the books are kind of the prize thing in astrology because we've used them as resource or what we enjoyed about them and it's like yeah that's yeah. that's kind of in my face i have a favorite shelf that i always go for. <laughs> <laughs> the ones i go for the most and then it kind of goes up in the tiers and then the ones i use uh, for when i need Re them yeah resources yeah. and whatnot yeah i'm the yes. same way yes <sighs> well it has been a pleasure talking with you today yeah, uh, thank you so much i You're really welcome. really appreciate Thanks it everyone me. thank you for the time today that you spent with us listening about venus and leo and other yeah. uh topics around venus in her retrograde cycle this year and uh, we appreciate you so much thank you so much and until next time have a great day bye-bye bye-bye